of Baldwin and Creech, Gentlemen of Style. I'm Baldwin. And I'm Creech. And today I have the great pleasure of being able to bring one of my close old school friends to the set of Gentlemen of Style. Uh, I've known this guy for years. Uh, he's an author. He's an actor. He's a somewhat activist. He's a comedian. He can play the piano. I could go on with a bunch of accolades, but then we wouldn't have a reason to do an interview. So without further ado, let's welcome the Gentlemen of Style my friend, my man, Kevin Sanders. All right. Kev. All right, gentlemen. My man. All right, All right brother. Get yeah. a big dude, man. You <laughs> clean, though. Man, build, man. Build, man. Build, build doesn't bother like, you, bro. Have a seat, man. Have a seat. Well, thank yeah, you, yeah, gentlemen. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> so, All right. Kevin. And tell, give us a little bit of background on yourself. Tell us about you know all your adventures, all your journeys, where you're from. Who, who is, who's Kevin? All right, well, let's see here. Let me see here if I remember this guy correctly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I give him my own eulogy. Uh, no, um, I, am a, I am a fellow who was born in Harlem, New York. Oh, and uh, my family moved down here to North Carolina when I was uh, very young. And uh, that's where I met this gentleman. Yeah. Um, we met in uh, elementary school, if I'm not uh, mistaken, uh, some years ago. And, Emma Khan. Uh, Shout out to Emma Khan. Emma Khan, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we, we became the best of friends. And uh, in school, I was quite the uh, artistic fellow. I loved to draw, loved to write, loved to dance. And I was always in talent competitions, doing the Michael Jackson. Um, <laughs> doing the Michael Doing. When I say Michael. doing, he was doing. So some people impersonated Michael. I thought I was Michael. Doing. Hey. I had a curl with the parts. You know how you make the waves come down on the side? Yeah. <laughs> so don't look for those pictures. I don't, don't. They're out there. <laughs> They're out there. Hey, all of us wanted to be Michael. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. I had the jacket with all the zippers on. I had a real Man, let me tell you something. <laughs> Every morning, it was Billie Jean. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta let it go sometimes. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, man, I I, um, I definitely did that, and we did all kind of school plays, uh, and uh, I loved doing that. Um, but then when I graduated, mm -hmm. I went to went back to New York, and I went to and graduated from the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. So, and from there, I was able to I was blessed to do a lot of off Broadway. I uh, got seven commercials uh, to my um, resume, and got to work with people like uh, Bill Murray, um, got to work with uh, Tony Randall, um, got to work with uh, several, several, several other. Uh, those, those are big names. And, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, they were, they were great people. They were great yeah. people. And uh, met Michael Douglas and so many other people. I uh, wow. worked with Luther Vandross, wow. rest his soul. And um, that, that was a, a, a big highlight. Uh, to uh, get to do that. And that's outstanding. Yeah, man. And, and, uh, and all through that, I I, I wrote as well. And uh, <clears throat> but uh, uh, overall, it, it has been a great life. I got a chance to experience and travel a lot of places and mm -hmm. meet a lot of different people. And uh, that uh, actually helped out a lot with my writing. Yeah. So yeah, let's let's get into the books. As okay. a uh, matter of fact, um, I, of course, when I you know called him an author, he's a published author. See, a lot of people write. That doesn't mean that you're an author. That just means that you you write. Right. So he's an actual published author. So let's let's start with uh, let's start with the children's book first. Okay. Uh, Little Ruby. If you haven't gotten it, go out there and get that book. Go. Little Ruby. Little Ruby is a very uh, special story that's uh, near and dear to my heart because it was written um, for and about my mother, um, her childhood. She was born with polio. And uh, so she had a very difficult time walking and keeping up with her older brother and sister. So as the story tells, without telling you the entire story, uh, it's the story of the spirit of an overcomer. When you are born with any form of a def uh, defect or anything like that, um, don't see it as a curse. Right. It is a blessing because someone sees you and they 
decide to go on and persevere because of you. Right. And uh, the story actually accents that. It actually talks about how special we all are in God's sight. You know, whether we're born with a handicap, whether we're born with one limb, or or any other uh, uh, anything that the the world would call a defect. Right. It is actually a blessing. You know, because we're all created from a God who makes no mistakes, and so that's what that that book is all about. And I actually love it because, again, it's uh, about my mother's uh, story as a child. That's a great story. She was told that she would not uh, walk past the age of twelve, really? and she wound up playing tennis and softball. Really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, wow. and beating her brothers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she it just let me know, uh, being raised by a single mother, her that I could do anything. I, I could do anything and be anything. So. She, she was a great woman. She, she really you. was. She, uh, she always made me feel at home and, and, and always had a smile for me. So uh, she, she was a great woman. I do appreciate it. I appreciate it. Let's talk about your, um, your other book. My other book is called Misguided Love. Misguided um, Love. Now this book is uh, a story that is loosely, and I'll say loosely, written <laughs> on my experiences um, as a teenage boy who had uh, been misled into the world of pornography. Right. And what happens when young men or, or even young women are thrust into that world, our sense and our sensibility of relationship is warped. Right. Um, this story talks about how this young boy who had a wonderful heart, but his guidance was off. And so he didn't know how to relate in a sensible manner because he all he knew was what he saw from the images and from the videos and those things and this is a subject in society that most people don't talk about right they don't see it as a problem it's, it's taboo it's, it's taboo it's very, it's very no taboo. one can really find help you can't find help in the right. church you can't find because no one wants to talk about it and then you have a lot of people who don't even see it as a problem right oh you're a boy you're supposed to see that right you know, you're supposed to understand it it's, but they don't realize the emotional damage that happens when someone is misguided in that manner. Right. Because they want going into men who don't know how to relate. Right. And that actually cripples our society. Mm -hmm. And they don't see it as an issue until a crime is committed of some sort. But all of these things, every inmate that you see in the world was that once a child. Once a child. Exactly. Who someone guided or misguided. And you know, now, now that you're, 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 you made that statement, I'm thinking now, like some of the stuff that we're seeing in the news today, yes. you know, these big executives and yes. producers and everything is all coming out. And, yes. and now I'm thinking about it a little bit more deeply, you know, off of what you just said, it's, that could probably have been some, Absolutely. Of, some of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And That's because of the that. fact that it's taboo, no one will actually right. attack the subject. Right. Mm -hmm. right. When children are forced to see these types of things when they're not allowed to be children, I'll put it that way. Right. Because I think as long as a kid can be a kid, he should be a kid. Absolutely. You know, I have an 18 year old and uh, a 12 year old and a 15 year old and when we go to the movies and anything seems like it's going to get romantic or a little too far, I watch them and they, they do this mm -hmm. because they, you know, they've been trained per se as I'm supposed to do, you know, of course the 18 year old is getting a little older now so it's aunt kind of started doing that. <laughs> I was like, are your fingers crazy? But it's hard for me to look at him while I'm cleaning myself. I'm like, hey, don't look at that. Hey, hey, oh, hey, hey, close your eyes. Well, you got to see when it's over. You got to know when it's over. I'm going to tell you what happened. Hold on, hold on. But, but something you just said that, that, that you know, as, as knowing you for so long that I'm so proud of is the joy you take in being a father. Yes, sir. Um, you yes, know, sir. This show has is, is really been about trying to make better men. Uh, to show some, you know, to show some different perspectives on man, on, on men versus, as everybody say, manhood. Right. I, don't, I don't get into the manhood part a whole lot because I think that's the stage in life. Right. But when we're talking about men, it's a journey. Yes. And that journey needs to have someone that helps you along the way. And as men, when we have young men. That is our job. Absolutely. And I know you take that very, very, very seriously. Yes, sir. Talk a little bit about that. I have, uh, man, listen, I have traveled across the world. I have written books. I have gone to places. I've done all kinds of things. But the greatest joy in my life is actually being a father. And a lot of people may say, um, well, that's cliche. No, not for me. Um, it means everything to me because there's a lot of things that I did not get, as many of us did not right. get right. Um, from our fathers, you know, and that's not to throw shade on anyone because you can't give what you don't have. Correct. So I learned 
that not having is not an excuse for not getting. Right. You have to go out and find resources, whatever you need to do to learn, to make sure that you do your job to the best of your ability. And the more I dedicated my life to doing it and being a good father to them, the more I enjoyed it and the more effortless it, it became. And I tell you what, man, there is nothing like those gentlemen. There is nothing like them. I, I love listening to their music just to even understand it, right. or to try to understand. And I, I, I mess with them sometimes. They'll come in the house and I'll say, hey, you heard that new Kodak Black? And they'll be like, what? <laughs> that new who? You mean Kodak Camera? He's trying to camera? No, 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 I'm on that. You know? And I try to do their little cool. dance. I'm like, hey, I know you see this. And they're like, dad, dad, no. cut it out. No, cut man. it out, you know? You but I, I, I go where they go. Um, I, I listen to what they listen to. I, I spend that type of quality right. with them because I never want them to be at a place where they think I am not interested in who they are and what they are because that is what shapes a man to have a father stay with him. We went out to play basketball um, a couple months back uh, in, uh, this summer and we're out on the court and there's all these other young, young gentlemen out there and one of the kids said to my oldest son, he said, who's that, who's that old guy? Right there. First of all, I was like, I ain't no old guy out this <laughs> uh, young fella. But he said, that's my dad. And the kid said, your dad plays ball with you? He said, yeah, doesn't yours? Hmm. No, no. So there was a playground of children with no fathers right. except me. Right. You know what? I played with all of them. I experienced the same thing. Yeah. Um, the same thing. The same thing. And it, I mean, it's great what you just said. Though. I mean, it's, 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 it's really great. Um, and I was just thinking about some of my personal experiences, like on my drive to uh, uh, take my daughter to school in the morning time. You know, I, I asked her, I like, you know, what what are you into now? Who's 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 the new music that you're listening to? What do right. you and your friends listen to to get that dialogue? Right. You know, to working to find out, hey, what's going on in your life? You know, where is your mind at? You know, Absolutely. You, you, you got to get in there. You, you have to have these discussions in order to understand it from their point of view. It's Absolutely. not necessarily always correct from your point of view. Right. Because. Um, we were talking about this about a week or so ago. Uh, the world is changing. You know, the social environment, the social yes. interactions, all that is changing. We right. can't, like, like you know, Terrence and I spoke about it, there's a blend. We yeah. understand stuff how it used to be from the past, but also we, we experienced this transitional stage into the new culture of how things are. So we see both sides of it. Mm -hmm. The kids of the day, they necessarily, they don't really understand what we understand. Right. And we have to bring ourselves kind of to their level so we can bring some consciousness to actually what they're doing. I mean, what they're doing is not wrong, right? but we need to understand so we can put some balance to that. Right. So it's perfect what you're saying. And we have to talk to them, get into their world, understand what's going on so we can keep the communication you know, crisp and clear That's and right. keep them on the path. That's right. So it's, it's very important. Because every, everything that they learn, they need to learn from you. Correct. Everything that, every ounce of good knowledge that you can give them even warnings of bad things. Exactly. They need to get it from you. They don't need to get it in the streets. They don't need to get it from the game stations. They don't need to get it <clears throat> from social media because they're, they're just piranhas. You know, they're out there ready to just devour them. So you have to make sure that you spend the quality time and that's how you gain the trust. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. My five-year-old, she wanted to know what all the curse words are. Mm. <laughs> okay. Normally maybe you I don't know how you do it in your household. You might steer clear of that. Not this guy. Right. I said, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you all the curse words. <laughs> and I did. Right. Told all the curse words. Mm -hmm. Now you know what they are. Don't you say are, it. You're not to say them. You're mm -hmm. not to repeat them. Right. When someone else is doing that, it's bad. Right. It's bad. But now you understand. And I think parents get caught up sometimes. They want to sugarcoat things to their kids. Right. And right. then they get, they, they get this exposure out there in the world, and you let the world become their teacher instead, right. of, instead of you instead doing instead it. Of you being when you're teacher. their first line of defense. Yeah, when you're the first line of defense. Absolutely. Put yourself in that position. I Absolutely. mean, this is our opinion. You know, take it for what it's worth. Yes. You know, hey, you run your house, we don't run. That's right. We can only give it to you. That's right. <laughs> and, and, and as I, I tell them, you know, no one knows how intelligent you are Correct. just by looking at you. You have to speak. You have to stand up straight. Right. You have to make sure that you are representing your best you mm -hmm. in all cases, no matter all where you're cases. at. If you're on the basketball court, that's fine. If you're in theater, if you're on the stage, that's fine. You still have to represent your best you. Every day is an interview. Every day is an interview, Every and day. you are the car. You're the car. You're the car. You're the car. You're right there. That's right. Yep. So, and, and, and uh, I think that that's one of the major things that has affected me uh, as a father. 
and as a man. And so I make sure that no matter what choices I make, <clears throat> no one sees me other than what I really am. Right. I try very hard to stay Kevin, even with my style of clothing. Right. I like to be comfortable, but I still like to snazz it up here and there. That's because that's my style. That's your style. You know, it makes me comfortable. Whatever your style is, be comfortable. Correct. You know, as long as you're not offensive, you know, to someone. Some people's comfortability is, yeah. draws other people to uncomfortability. <laughs> but, but you want to be, you know, you want to have a certain type of etiquette that makes, you know, your, your wardrobe speak for you. Correct. Because my mother taught me, you know, it's not the clothes that make the man. It's the man in the clothes. 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 Because you can put a nice outfit on a bum. He's still going to be a bum in a nice <laughs> outfit. <laughs> with all the things that you do, you're kind of the renaissance man with, you know, author, commercials, singing, uh, playing the piano, so, so many different things. So that creates a situation where you have to transition into different styles. Right. So how do you manage to make that happen for yourself? Well, that's a great question. What, what I do is I really go with the feel of it. Depending on the audience that I'm going to be uh, in front of, um, I want to always leave them with an impression of that guy's a real person. Right. So I don't ever want to try to dress up to be something that I'm not. I want to always leave whomever I'm entertaining with the thought of, that's a real guy right there. He can do this. He's a, he's a person that can do these things. He's not that. Right. He is someone that can do that and enjoys that. And so when you can do what you enjoy, you become comfortable in your outfit. So for example, if I'm, if I'm playing keys or what have you, you know, I'll put something on casual because that makes me feel comfortable right. so I can actually sit and play. Right. If I'm singing, I can wear anything, but <laughs> I like to be comfortable and I want people to enjoy the vocals. I want them to enjoy the song you know, or the songs without getting caught up in, well, he had this on it. Because some people do that. You know, some people try to market themselves as they're just doing their craft. Right. And I think that's a huge thing. You know, just be who you are. I think that's one of the main reasons why uh, Bruno Mars is so successful. He doesn't try to market himself. He just goes on the stage and just whatever he's got on, he just has right. fun. And it's a key, it's a great key to success. So, that's what he likes. Yeah, that's what he likes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, absolutely, man. So, that, that's, I do the same thing. I, if I'm writing, I, I like to be comfortable. I like to sit down and have something nice on or whatever. If I'm going to speak to people about the books that I'm writing, of course, I want them to see Kevin. Right. So, I'm not trying to look down on anyone. I'm certainly not trying to look up. You know, I'm just trying to make sure that we're looking on the same even kid when I have something comfortable that makes me feel good and that I, it can... Um, cast itself out to the people that are watching me. Well, you came in here gentlemen of style appropriate today. Hey, you know, yeah, listen, yeah. man, I knew the show I was coming on, and I knew <laughs> that if I don't come with my A-game, I could pay with this for years. So, <laughs> I, what, what, what's your sock game like? My sock game is on point simply yeah. because I had a long 20, maybe 30 minute argument with my oldest boy about letting me get his fresh socks <laughs> for this outfit. Now, the shoe game is tight, the jeans are right, you know, I got the shirt and my stylist helped me out and all that. Can we get some shoe sock cam going? But I told him to give me those socks <laughs> or I'm going to take them so I can be ready for the show. So, as you can see, as you can see, the sock game, oh yeah, oh, oh, the sock oh, game is on no, point. Don't make me have to get you can see, yeah, yeah. Do you see the, the, the yeah, yeah. this is for you, see all you Carolina fans, I love you. Yeah. But this is a little bit for you Duke fans, hey, I'm praying for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> they're going to roast me about this later. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's definitely, uh, definitely, uh, uh, one of the reasons why I'm so proud of you guys, man. Uh, not only that you look good, you're good men, and it, and it definitely appreciate that, kid. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah definitely. Sure. You know, um, I love real people. You know, yeah. I, I really appreciate it. It is a lost art in this society. It's it a is. lost, it uh, a lost thing in this. In this Sugar society. is a lost art. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And that's what a major thing about being a gentleman is. Right. You know, you're never at a place where you don't open up a door, right. you should never get to a place where you don't say, excuse me, please, thank you, yes ma'am, no ma'am, no matter how old, I, my little nieces, yes ma'am, I'm teaching them that that's the way they should be spoken to. Right. Exactly. But I'm younger than you, Uncle Kevin, but you're still a lady. That's right. And so that's why I'm gonna open that door. That's, right. that's what I do. That's, that's perfect. That's what I do. That's, that's perfect. perfect. And, and, and as, as men, we should always be teaching. Yes. We should always be mentoring. We should always be looking for that next person to help because that's our job. Absolutely. That's our job, and it's the simplest job. 
Yes. It's the simplest job to be able to tell somebody something that you know. That's right. It doesn't cost you any money. Cost you anything. You know, Absolutely. It doesn't cost you anything but a little bit of time. That's right. And that time can go so, so far for that person at that particular time. And that is a major part of who I am. I love people. I love people of all races, cultures. Uh, it doesn't matter. Whatever your faith or your belief is, I believe we come from a God who did not make a mistake. And so everybody deserves love. So if you look on my Facebook page, you'll see me taking selfies with every every kind of person in the world. I don't got to receive so much flag. Hey, brother, you don't know who those people are. No, I don't, but I do know where they're from. Right. And as a result of that, I'm going to go ahead and show them some love. Because you never know if that little bit of love that you show somebody is saving their life or someone else's life. True. There are some people who live in very dark worlds. You're right. People don't speak to yeah, them. Absolutely. They don't get any love. And here comes this six foot five guy. Hey, let me take a selfie with you. You know? <laughs> and it might change their day. It might change their day. That's all it takes. You know, just a little bit. And you do it, you know, for anyone that you can see. You know, anyone that, that is out there in your circle. And people you know? and people are needy. I mean, I see people out there and they kind of do it indirectly. They could they, they speak to you. But they're seeking. The they're attention. seeking it. They're yes. Seeking the attention. Yes. You know. You know. There, there's a lot of lost people out there. Absolutely. And that is the premise of all the books that I write. Right. You know, regardless of the subject, it is to help. Right. It is to educate, entertain, but also to help. Right. Because people need help, and and again, a lot of people come from different backgrounds. But you might be surprised at how similar our backgrounds are. Right. You know. Right. So I, that's why I love this show. That's why I appreciate this show because you guys are, are, are great gentlemen, but you also exude that without any phoniness. Right. Now, there's a lot of people who try to do what you do, right. but they, they want their suits to speak for them. They don't let the men in the suits speak. Right. And that's where my respect comes in right there. Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah. we, we, we get a lot of, you know, we want the suits, we want <clears throat> the suit, we want the suit, are y'all selling suits? We get that, and, that, and that's great. We appreciate that. You know, we do take a lot of pride in you know what we wear and our appearance. But this show is really based upon trying to help make better men. Right. To show men and women how, as men, we can conduct ourselves, and people can see us in a different light. Right. When I get ready to turn on the TV, and I'm looking through, and I want to see somebody like me. I can't find that. Right. I can't find a show like this where I can see, you know, three brothers sitting, having a conversation about fatherhood, right. about, you know, style, about journeys. Yes. I don't see that show. That's right. So we created this show right. for that specific purpose. Exactly. Not not to, to wear suits, not to, you know, <clears throat> as, as, as the old school once said, not to floss. Right. We created this with the true intention of trying to help and to give back yes. and we've got other things coming down the pipe you know that's going to add on to this but this was our vision to be able to sit down with men and women and, and really have conversations and dialogue and go you know learn something from them. right you know connect let the people who watch us learn something from what we're doing and right. what we're talking about yeah and, and on top of that just to add uh, a little bit more value to it <clears throat> we believe that any any person, it doesn't matter who you are, you have something to add. Right. You have something to add of, of, of value that can help the next person to put you to the next level. Because we think every individual, they, we don't stop. We can always continue to be better, better, and better. It's an ongoing thing. We're learning something every day. It's, it, it, it happened in the past. It's happening in the present. Right. And it's going to continue to happen in the future. That's right. So, you know, that's that's just, you know, just a, a, a little bit more because we're, we're, we're stacking on top of each other more, more, and more. We're here to help. And, you know, as, as an audience out there, if there's something, we're open. You know, we, we welcome the feedback. Send us your questions. And, you know, Terrence and I, we'll get back. We'll get right back to you then. Right back to you. We, 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 we may even do a whole show on it. You know, we're, we're, we're definitely the people that you can actually connect with. We absolutely you know, nobody mans our our emails or, or any of that. This is all of us. So when right. you connect, you're talking to one of us right. or both of us at the same time. We, so we, we're a part of the community. Yeah, right. Yeah, we strive to do that. And well, what you saying part of the community? I'm gonna say this. It's a little bit off subject. Not really, but it's in the value of what we're talking about. Go vote. If you're not voting, not just in the major mm -hmm. elections. Vote in your community, right. yeah. your your mayors, your 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 council people. 
go vote. Those things are important because those are directly related to you. So I just want to put that little PSA in there. Healing is is a, a very important thing in our world. It's it starts in our community, of course, but it branches out to everywhere that you go. You have to give light to as many people as can as can see it, stand it, or receive it. I, I think that that is the major issue with uh, our problem as far as relationships are concerned, uh, which is the subject that I write on a lot. I think that people who are damaged when they try to go into a relationship with others. The people that are remotely healed get damaged even more. There's right. nothing worse than a wound that is reinfected. So I think that what you do, what I do, what we should all do is continue to heal individually before we go out and try to hurt someone else. Or thinking that we're trying to help someone else, what we do, because hurt people are guaranteed to hurt another person. So get your healing first. Right. And then you can go out right. and help heal somebody else. Absolutely, you know, and that's why I, that's why I do what I do, you know. And um, speak on that a little bit because you <coughs> you do some of the things that we do as far as go out and try, you know, and speak and, and mentor. So mm -hmm. I, I do I do go to schools. I do travel to schools. I travel uh, travel to auditoriums and churches uh, across the country, mm -hmm. and I speak to as many people that, that will <laughs> tolerate me. Uh, I, I joke <laughs> with them and I, I laugh. But at the end of the day, you know, it's all about teaching people the truth about healing. Um, understanding who and what you are. And I think that when you don't understand who you are, you begin to emulate what you are being taught. This is why we, we celebrate or we um, look up to celebrities right. who are terrible people. You know, <laughs> we know we, hey. we'll put it out there. Hey. You know? Give you truth. Go I mean, Go you know, and, and not to call anybody's names, but I mean, we worship Kardashians, and and you have a generation of people, or young girls, for example, who look up to Kim or Nicki Minaj, and right. they see them. Yeah, they think that's the template. As the template yes. or the the standard of what they should be, and right. so they go through so much hurt that it's, it's very important for us that have the truth and that know the truth that we send that message out to as many children as possible because they are our future and so they need to know that it's not about trying to be like your local rapper it's not like it's not about trying to be cool and have your pants sagging all down it's about being a respectable citizen right because once you become a respectable citizen someone that would vote um, then your voice can be heard the playing field is unlevel, as we all know. So once you learn how to play the game by respecting yourself first, then your voice can be heard. Then it's not an issue of how you wear your clothes or how you wear your hair. It's an issue of I'm here and this is my stance and I will be heard. And I think that once we learn how to do that, that is how we get these opportunities to help each other. You know, And I think we get caught up in what we're wearing and what, what our clothes look like or where we're from and all that and we put all of that out there but that's not the moniker we need to walk underneath we need to walk underneath I'm a person first because we were all as I was saying before uh, off camera you know every inmate that you see every convicted criminal was at one time a little baby that was guided or misguided in the wrong direction or the right direction that's right. That's and that's what happens so we as a society are responsible for what happens to each other so if we're not giving love, get out of the way. Right. That's why I see it. Yeah. So that's what I do. I travel, I go as far as I can, as many people that will accept me, anyone that needs or would love for me to come and speak, I will definitely do it. It's not about money, it's not about that at all. It's about reaching out to people who need help. Right. I give seminars, I talk to the youth, I talk to young women, I talk to grown women uh, and grown men and explain to them about healing. If someone wanted to get in contact uh, with you, how would they go about doing that? You can reach out to me. I'm, I'm on Facebook. I'm working on the Instagram thing. I'm trying to get my sons to help me to get an Instagram account. So what, how, what, they, what, what do, they, um, do they need to search on Facebook? They can search on Facebook for Kevin Sanders. You're not going to miss me, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> you'll see me with a selfie with a thousand people. You're not going to miss me. Um, you can feel free. And I also have another page called Kevision. Kevision Entertainment, whereas in I do uh, all of the speaking, the writing, the, the singing. So you can be reached at Kevision. Can you spell it? Is it K-E-V? K-E-V-I-S-I-O-N. Kevision Entertainment. It's also one of the uh, <clears throat> one of the links to my Facebook page, which is Kevin Sanders. Okay. Um, you can find it and you can call, you can contact me, book me, and um, I would love to come to any event to speak to anyone uh, about my experiences. Um, 
I do seminars with my books. I just I talk freehand off of, um, off script, you know, to uh, <clears throat> speak and help heal any group of individuals. That's so you do Q, do. Q and A's and all that. Yes, sir. Absolutely, yes, sir. absolutely. Yeah. And I'm a real talk person. You know, I don't think you can help anyone uh, with uh, phoniness. I don't know, um, absolutely. You know, uh, it doesn't yeah, work at all. It does not work, and so um, I love to to help uh, as many people as possible. I love to laugh. I mean, I have a lot of fun. But you'll find that laughter is the best medicine. Yeah, you mm -hmm. know. And he knows because he and I grew up, and man, that's all we did in school. I don't know how we graduated, but <laughs> <laughs> we we had a we, we had, had a, a good time. time man. Uh, yeah. We had a good time, and shout out to to, to Alan Wilson. Uh, yes, Alan. Alan yeah, yeah. He, Alan Wilson. Yeah, Alan Wilson. He he's kind of one of my travel agents now, and yeah. uh, he also uh, one of our childhood friends. And I mean, man, we had a, we had a ball. We had a great time. Had a ball. Uh, you know, just just being us. Yeah. You know, so uh, shout out to him. And uh, and uh, it, it it just amazes me now that I think back to that time. Mm -hmm. You know, young boys sitting in class, not realizing one day, you know, that we were going to be men. Yes. Um, but just looking at where we came from and the things that we had to go through through our journeys and then to be able to sit here now and, and see where we've come and you know we're fathers and yes. you know businessmen and, and, and along that line and you know I've known this guy for over 20 years um, so it, it's, it's great to have you know this type of situation where you know guys can sit on the stage have these conversations and, and impart knowledge yes and um, Yes. Along that lines, you know, you can also, if you book it, Kevin, you can also book Baldwin and Creech and get that double trouble. So, you know what I mean? We, we, we. Double trouble. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely would mind good trouble. come speaking. And, you know, we, we come from a business background as well. And uh, so we, we've got our journeys and our stories and things of that nature as well. So um, we, we would definitely have no problem to come and speak and, you know, just have a. Have I'll a, actually put that in there too. I'll flash some of our accolades. Up there, so you can see that as well, uh -huh. so you know what's going on. Absolutely, and yeah, make sure you, you know, if you haven't gotten it already, make sure you go out and get get Kevin's books. Let him know which books you got, Kev. Okay, uh, Misguided Love uh, is out. You can get that on BarnesandNoble.com, uh, or you can get it on Amazon.com or iUniverse.com. Uh, Little Ruby, I actually self-published that, so you can reach out to me um, on through those. Uh, avenues or those venues and uh, I can get that to you and the new book that's coming out called uh, Crimson Fantasy of 2018 but before you do not want to miss that book <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to miss that book and I'm writing it but uh, <laughs> it is going to be great it's, mm -hmm. it's going to be great it's a, an adult book that talks about the, what happens when reality and fantasy cross yeah. in relation that's all you need to know that's it that's mm -hmm. all you need to know look out for that one it's going to be great <laughs> And I got to tell this story before we get out of here. It's always great, and I, and I try to I try to live my life that way. But it's always great when you have somebody that you can just reach out to and say, "Hey, you know, I'm doing this or I'm doing that," and this is this this is that type of guy. You know, when we reached out to him to do the show, you know, I know he had things to do, and you know, he's a busy man like we're busy. But he said, "Okay, tell me when. Tell me when. Like, I'm, I'm there." Absolutely. So, you know, I really Absolutely. appreciate that. And he also, you know, I see that he's wearing the 1229 bracelet. I was wondering if he was going to say that. He's also wearing that 1229 yeah. So that's real. For y'all for y'all cats that, that, that don't think it's real, it's real. Mm. Go out there and get you some 1229. I'm rocking mine today as well. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. Um, you know, with that, that having been said, go on and do what you do. Well, you know, like how we always like to say, there is no excuse for good taste. Because at Baldwin and Creech, we believe in better. And also, as an addition, we are gentlemen of style. Until next time. See ya. Yes, sir. Chosen to bring forth that hoping, put it back together when niggas thought it was broken, but it's open, wide enough for the whole fam to come through.
Dough stacking in bundles. Flows tracks in the one twos. Get your run shoes. Run fast as you can. Here comes the Iron Man. Jump out the frying pan. Smack dead in the fire. I ain't Iron Man. Shorty said, rest your head and retire. But I'm the boss, babe. Lawless Inc. AW.